We here today, Baltimore City, we with a legend. Now, a lot of people are in the fashion in our city, a lot of up and coming designers. But if y'all don't know this name, y'all really need to do your research and your history. We here today with a legend. Introduce yourself. My name is Saleh A. Rahman, the proud owner and the developer of Saleh's The Federal Hill. First, Tailoring Designs, and I'm at 1018 South Charles Street in Federal Hill. So we down here in Federal Hill, and you know many people of my generation and younger, we come down here to party, but we don't know it's a hidden gem right here in Federal Hill. So how long have you been down here at the shop? I've been in this particular shop 10 years. I was across the street, directly across the street at 10, um, 33 South Charles Street for 15 years. I've been in the Federal Hill area for 26 years, totally in the Federal Hill area, but I've been established for 45 years. So give the people a little backdrop of how long you've been into fashion and how long you've been tailoring. Just give them a little backdrop of little what backdrop, got you there. I start off, as I told you earlier, in the, in the college where I learned my skills, called, uh, off-brand college called Bay College in Maryland where I learned my skills. One of my instructors, her name is Selena Thomas. She convinced me that I could, you know, use the sewing machine that I learned. She showed me how to operate the sewing machine and how to take a female's measurement to make a skirt. And from that point on, I've seen that I had some blessed hands. I decided to make some magic happen. I changed my whole lifestyle from a little kid to becoming an adult real fast. And um, uh, before that, though, I met a guy named Jesse Little. I have to say that he was my motivator. He was my mentor. He's the one. I met him on a Wednesday, and a Wednesday word, he had a word for every day. And I met him on a day called, the word for the day was development. And I was like, development? I never even heard of such a word. I, I was a little sweet guy. And he, he explained to me, develop your mind. Learn that mind. He had, as a matter of fact, he had a, a music that he was playing. Lonnie Listen, it was called Expand Your Mind. <laughs> it was a jazz thing. He would have that playing while he was talking to me too. So that's how I got initially started. And from that point on, uh, I got me a little shopping cart. That's my car. And I changed up some wood. And I went to, you know, during that time I was not too much of a straight type of guy. I was doing a little off the record type of thing, like all of us do in the community. But I still had hope in my mind. I still had, it was going to be some hope. And God answered my prayer when he sent me Jesse Little. And that was the, he was my angel. And I listened. That was the secret. The secret then I had to listen because I had to find out was he telling me the truth and finally he was. And that's how I got motivated. That's how he motivated me to move on from that point. I, I learned my skills, uh, uh, got me some cutting wood, went to my house, took my furniture out, put me a, built me a cutting table. I got me a used sewing machine. I put my tape measure down my neck. I told you, when I found I had these blessed hands, my mind was made up. And that's how I got started. And a few months after that, he told me about this shack, a building they had. It was like a shack. He said, Good, this is your place. I said, no, I want to be downtown, Jesse. This. He said, downtown? This is your downtown. I said, that's a shack. You know, you, know, you want the best. I'm going to come into the fabulous shop, the looking good, the Playboy type of thing. He said, no, this is your shop. This is downtown. I listened to that. I went in there, washed the walls down. Uh, I didn't have no car, but I met this guy named Dr. Cathar. He was a, a doctor. He had all kinds of stuff, so he had some carpet. He said, I'll give you some carpet if you make me a suit. Not like, make you a suit? Okay, I said, of course, I'm trying to convince him I can do a suit as a tailor. I don't know nothing about me. I couldn't even sew a button on good. So sure enough, I made him the best suit I could make him. It was all messed up. He gave me the carpet. I'm still on my way. After I got the, uh, after I got the carpet, I started to learn how to practice my skills every day, every day, every day for like about seven years straight, just learning my skills. My family thought I was crazy, which I was, because this is something new to me. This was a new whole challenge for me. I left all my friends alone. They left me alone because they thought I was off my mind. I saw them talking about tailoring all day long, designing. I went to school, I went to night college, and went to all, I was bugging the teachers crazy. I was hungry, and I wasn't hungry for food. I was hungry for knowledge. They thought, what kind of guys? I said, I want to know what the first tailor did, how he done it, why he do it. I was asking questions like that. The teacher said, you just, you just want to know too much. I want to learn because I want to qualify myself. Why I want to learn how to, why, why my pants can't be like the guy who's getting $100 for his pair of pants? Because I didn't have the knowledge. So I want to learn. And it took me about 10 years just to learn that. And that's how I got started motivating to run with today. Then I went to New York. Now I went to a guy with the furs. I was in the thrift store, 
messed around looking for some clothing to repair, and a guy named Mr. Randy Lewis. He said, hey, young man. He saw the tick measure on my neck. He said, hey, what's that tick measure? Can you saw? I said, yeah, a little bit. He said, well, can you repair a fur coat? I said, he said, no, just repair it. He just convinced me to repair it. And I don't know, I never even saw a fur coat, to be honest. I never saw a fur for real. This was the first time they even had any a clue what a fur was. He said, repair this fur coat, because he had a customer want to buy it. I go to my shop, I open up the lining, I glue it together. I took it back, it was like a stiff boy. He said, man, what you do with my coat? I said, I know, I said, it's fixed. He said, let's just glue my coat together. But he didn't beat me up. But that place said, okay, try something else. And but, but at that time, I seen that there was a whole different language. I said, man, this is serious business. First, so I had to learn about the first. I had to took my tape measure around my neck, caught me a bus the next week, went to New York, found out what to do to learn about the first. I ain't know nobody, nobody knew me. They were all the Jews up there were saying, no teach, no teach. I went to about at least 50 years. All of them said no. At the last failure, decided to let me in. That's how I got into learning about the fur. Then I come back to Baltimore, I meet another failure. His name is Mr. Jimmy. He was the African American failure. He was a real failure like myself. He, that's how he taught me. He knew about the skins. He was my blessing. I come back here, he heard about me, and he took liking to me because he saw himself to me when he was working for other fur companies. But he saw me as going to be independent. So he, he put all the knowledge that he wanted to do himself and put it into me. And that's how I became to learn about the fur world through Mr. Jimmy. He was a master fur. He's still living. He's still my teacher. He's the best. But I learned how I took my tailorman. Now I learned the skills of furs. Now I'm merging them together. Then I went to school for learning how to make patterns. It was too long. I went to uh, BCC, learned about pattern making. It took almost like a, about two years before you can even make a pair of pants pattern. Two years. I would never be, I would, I would be hungry. So I learned, I, I, I took their system and I revised it. I learned how to make my own system. Then I learned how to make my own patterns. And I became one of the best pattern makers in the city. Or in the country, really. I can, get, I can show you how to make a pants pattern in 15 minutes accurate. So this is, this is, this is part of my track. Then I went to school about leather. How, how, how did we learn how about leather suede? It's like learning a different language. So I learned about leather. I became a man of leather, how to repair leather, how to restyle leather, and all that kind of attitude. You gotta have a good attitude when you learn how to find your niche. I don't care how much money you have, how much money you don't have, attitude. You gotta have attitude, and that's part of the personality that's gonna get you through when you don't have the money. And this is uh, how I developed myself into learning how to become a furrier, tailor slash designer, and stuff like dressmaking, alteration work, clothing, uh, I have clientele from the lowest end to the highest end. Uh, some of my clientele are people like, uh, if you want to ask the questions, you can. I, I don't want to move too fast. All right, well, from, from the beginning to where you at now, how, how many years has that been? A total of about 45. It's been a total of 45 years. Now, 45 years, has it all been smooth sailing? Oh, no. You're going to get knocked down now. Life going to beat you up, and it's going to beat you up hard. you got to really be able to endure. You know, you got to endure some stuff that's, that's impossible, you're going to think. But guess what? That's learning skills. That's when it comes down to the attitude again. You got to have a just to what it looks like is against you and turn it around and make it work for you. And that's part of the growth process. It, it ain't gonna be, it's no easy ride. It's no, if it's easy, you're not even going to want it anyway. It's all going to be a, a working process of a struggle, it seems like. But as long as you're learning, you're gonna be, it's going to be beneficial to you. If there's no struggle in it, you don't want it anyway. Cause it's not going to have no value to it. As you, as the young man taught me, Ty, as you say, it don't have no substance. It don't have no, uh, what's the word you say, content. You, got, you have to have some content in what you're doing. If you don't have that, it, ain't gonna, it don't mean nothing. It's definitely going to be a fight. All my life I've been beat up. I ain't never had an easy ride. Everything I have to earn. But guess what? I loved it. I loved every second of it. I wouldn't even turn around for nothing in the world because it's what made me the guy I'm today. This is why I can survive. I've seen so many business come in and out. That's what because they look for the fast money. They weren't looking for the knowledge. You gotta learn the knowledge first, then you get the money. Well, you know in the time that we in, everything is clout, everything is popularity. Well, tell the people a few of the big names that you've had your hand in. Well, so far, I've been a very fortunate guy. He has different experience with uh, some of my clients. have been uh, uh, people like Anita Baker. I've done work for her. She's a popular singer. 
I think uh, one of my clients uh, was La Ben Hawkins. He was the owner of the Burger King and the Pizza Huts. Uh, one of my clients now, if they need my service, be Under Armour. When they have their uh, when they have their designers come, when they have their team, when they have when they want to do a, when they want to do a shooting for a publication, they have a tennis player coming. Who the famous tennis player of the day is? When they come down and need to wear Under Armour outfit, that's when they call a guy like me for my service to style up on a style of, uh outfit up on them then they do a picture shoot, shoot for them also uh, i'm fortunate to have as part of my client list is the harbor east at the four seasons i do work for them at the maya waterfront hotel when they have special clients that i do work for them all these people when they have a special client i'm the man i'm the real man uh when it comes down to them doing uh, they want the customer to be extremely happy with it they want to take out their dope then they come to Sally, the fireman, tailor man, designer. Also, I, I was able to do work for a princess. She was, uh, it's called the United Herb Kingdom. She was a princess, so she was staying at the Maya Hotel. And you know they wanted to be sure it was right. And she wanted all this special work done. And they had, you know, they called me the service. Uh, and they were like, Sally, you got to be sure, because she is the queen, she's the princess. So I'm like, I don't know if she's the princess too. The night I'm bringing the clothes because I was, they like, she wants the clothes tonight. I was like, who is this person so special? They say, she's the princess of the United Arab Nation. That's who she is. I was like, what? And when I got there, the, she had the whole sweep on the whole top of the, uh, uh, of the Maya Hotel. You know, she had to be strong because she was able to take their pictures off the wall and put her own pictures on the wall. So you know you had to be powerful to do that. <laughs> so everybody working on me, they say, man, if your work is right, because everybody had a sad face. Because they was like, if the queen, if the work is not right, all of us going to catch it. And I was I was in prayer too, to be honest. I was like, wow. I don't know I'm dealing with the princess. Sure enough, they made me wait for about a half hour, but it was well worth it. And when she finally tried the garments on, she fell in love. Everybody was all happy. They were like, yes. Everybody like, they were like a drop. Like, what's the big part? They said, because she's happy. And she was so happy. She paid me off well in finance, but what's more important, she appreciated me coming through so well. She gave me Four big things of dishes of lamb, dishes to take home with me. I couldn't see they, they had a big function, and she gave me all these dishes of lamb. And how this private silverware, all this uh, silverware was trimmed in the best of silver. And this was their, their personal. But if they won the exception, you had to be back here at 5 o'clock in the morning without silverware. I said, What? They said, If you're not back here, we will come get you with the police. I said, oh. I came through, of course. But that, that's how much blessing that, that my, my craft had gotten me over the years for be able to do uh, service for people like that. And I keep in mind, I start off in a little, I come off of White Lock, Baltimore, White Lock and Jewel Hill, Cherry Hill area, so I'm the same as any average young guy out there, but the only thing different, I changed my way of thinking. That's the difference, I changed my way of thinking. I took the frequency that said it's being on channel 114, I went to 114.1. That little difference made a big difference in my life. Okay, so this is, called the where you at show so you gave us a little his history we see where you at in your presence where do you see yourself in the future what you got coming well i have coming next as you uh my i'm trying to my attention is to establish a vault again i had a vault early on i didn't have a strong team so i'm revising that and i hope to establish a vault in my whole least about forty thousand furs uh open my school where i have a school of tailorman also have school of uh, alterations, a school of uh, designing, a uh, school of furbish, plus service, a school of leather. All these different schools, there's none in Baltimore City. So this all is going to be in one kind of warehouse. Also have storaging, for cleaning, uh, for designing, pattern making. This is what, this is my next move in Baltimore. Also another person who I did real fast, cutting up, another person, another big person I've done some work for as a Guy named Mr. Bay Bay Matthew Wynn. He's a great artist. He's one of the best artists in the in the world. I was very uh, fortunate to do work for him, do design and work for him. He's in Baltimore now. And Bay Bay Matthew Wynn, a well known, well legend artist. Well, we was here with the legend. We heard the story. <laughs> very inspiring. Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of people that's into fashion and tailoring, but it's a lot. A lot of ways they gotta go to get this quality and the content and we and we got it here first.
One more thing, just for the record, I'm just a baby though. I'm just a baby. So grateful uh, to see this young talent growing. And I'm gonna be one of the first one in Baltimore to say, hey, I remember. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I appreciate you. Thanks.